from a rocky island in the Mediterranean comes some beautiful rustic food and great food traditions. Welcome to the warm, generous, delicious world of Maltese food. Join our food safari to learn how to make the national dish rabbit stew. A golden baked pasta pie, vegetable soup with a twist, an incredibly simple beef recipe, and a sweet snack that's simply divine. Maltese food. It's great peasant food, big portions, definitely stands on its own with its own food. You know, the, the stufat, the rabbit, the pastizis, you know, the great soups that they make. So it's one of the world's great undiscovered cuisines. I think so, yeah. yeah. I've, I've, I've actually heard that uh, the Maltese people actually taught the Italians to cook. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Chef Paul Camilleri is a member of a food-mad family who raised their own rabbits, grew much of what they needed and cooked feasts for their large clan. He now runs his own fine dining restaurant, Sojourn. The main essential ingredient is tomato paste. It has to be a really good tomato paste. So can you buy Maltese tomato paste? Yes, you can, yeah. yeah? It's called conserver. Where? <laughs> Good conserver. Sir. Used in everything. Raw, eaten with bread. It's always there. It's always, whether it's Maltese, whether it's Italian, whether it's Australian, but you always got to have tomato paste in a Maltese kitchen, 100%. Yeah. Olive oil, extra virgin. Has to be extra virgin olive oil which everyone knows it's the first press, the best flavour. We use it, obviously, salads, dressings, and to cook with. Nan always has olive oil. And does she buy in bulk? Buys in bulk, you know. Uses it for to cure everything. Olive oil cures everything. Cures dry hands, cures <laughs> a cold. Can't beat it. Good olive oil, extra virgin. In every Maltese kitchen, 100%, you always have to have pulses, the green split peas, which are used in soups, also dried, cooked for the pastizzi. Mm -hmm. Broad beans, which are beautiful, soaked. You know, you can make purees. Also, we've got the capers, which are just not in the brine. These, these, these are the really good ones. They're salted. Mm -hmm. This is sadly not Maltese bread, but it's close enough. It's got the same consistency as a similar crusty Italian bread. One of the classic for lunch would be the hops bizate. Olive oil, good crusty bread, the tomato paste again, and, you know, olives and capers, anchovies. And when it's stale, obviously we use it for the pudina. Ah. The dessert, yes, so always, never waste. Mm. Yeah. So of all the sorts of pasta that Italy has, how many does Malta have? I think we steal two from them. <laughs> <laughs> Spaghetti mm -hmm. and the macaroni, mm. or the tube pasta, which makes tumpana, which is beautiful. For Maltese people, that the fresh peas are the winner. These beautiful peas are... <laughs> They're great. <laughs> great, So Love they're them. in the, uh, the rabbit stew? Rabbit they're stew, in... pastizzi, any other stew, any other cut of meat that the Maltese use. Mm on a basically simmer, similar base with the, with the tomatoes, with the potatoes, and with the peas. Hospice is a staple diet for all Maltese. You know? It's just basically bread with a, a tomato paste, but it can't be like a real tinny tomato paste. It has to be sweet, a little bit of acidity, um, good olive oil, um, fresh capers, fresh anchovies, pepper, and that's basically it, some so cheese. So sort of Maltese open sandwich. Yeah, pretty much. My dad's meticulous with his, how he spreads out his tuna and stuff, and he likes it with tuna. And I like it just simple, but he just gets it right to the edge and he does it really well. Why do you reckon uh, we haven't discovered it yet in Australia? I don't know, we're keeping it a secret for ourselves. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Shane Delia started in professional kitchens at 15 right. and has powered through to become head chef in record time. He's just opened his own restaurant featuring modern Middle Eastern cuisine with some Maltese influences. The main part of Hospice 8 is the bread. Oh, you know? OK. Yeah, you have to have good bread. A nice, thick slice of bread. Yeah, so you can see the bread's really dense inside. You know, it's, it's really fresh. We've used, like, an Italian tomato paste. Um, it, it, it's quite sweet, not a lot of acidity. It works really well, you know. So we just smear it on. 
the bread. Is this uh, is this a little bit like uh, Vegemite? Some like it thick, yeah, some I like think, it thin. Yeah, some like it thin, some like it thick. I like my Vegemite thick. Okay, so yeah. I like my tomato paste thick. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got some nice uh, baby capers. Because I like the white anchovies because they're just, just a little bit a little bit more different. The vinegar in them are a lot nicer. Oh, they're they're not as dry. Oh. Nice salt. Uh huh. Some um, cracked pepper. A bit of herb on there. So I'm just using some continental parsley, flat leaf mm. parsley, and olive oil. You have to have a nice olive oil. Oh, that's looking good. Yeah. Yeah. Want to cut it in half and have a go? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll try. Mmm. It's a winner. It is a winner. Mm. The Maltese make some distinctive cheeses from cow's milk called Jibene. The soft, fresh cheese is most similar to ricotta. Semi-hard, it has a sweet, nutty flavour that Maltese love. No one was making it in Australia until Polly Vella decided 20 years ago that she missed it so much she'd qualify as a cheesemaker and make her own. Tell me, Polly, the sorts of cheese that you make here. We make the soft Maltese cheese. What we do is uh, we sell, sell it like this in packaging, plus we can sell it in dry cheese. Oh, so it's quite a hard cheese. It's, it's hard, but it's soft again inside. And then we turn it into pepper cheese. It's a bit hard, but that's it. Ah. And it gets, again, white inside. It's a finer consistency. Yes. Yeah. I did send to Malta, and I took some with me to Malta, and people did taste my pepper cheese, and uh, they used to fight over it. <laughs> so there you are. <laughs> Why is it called? It's widow. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> the widow soup. My understanding of it is is that it was generally because um, years ago, if a woman became a widow, she lost the breadwinner in the family. So therefore, she couldn't afford expensive type of food or whatever. So this was just a wholesome food made out of very simple um, vegetables that she probably could have grown herself. If you're feeling it's a little down, this is a good soup. This oh, is good. Like, this one's a good one. Polly's daughter Alex works long days as a civil engineer. A fast, easy dinner is a classic widow's soup. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is we have to just um, fry up the garlic, the onion and parsley in a bit of um, olive oil and butter. And bring that all nicely together. So basically we're just going to cook the onions a little bit just so they get a bit soft and so oh. on. So now we just start to add all the vegetables. Potato, carrot and kohlrabi. Some broad beans, celery, peas. peas. <laughs> They're a little bit frozen. That's all right. But, you know, that's, but that's the good thing about this. I mean, you don't have to have fresh peas. Frozen peas are fine. Yeah. But you can't really have a Maltese dish without peas, no, can you? No, you can't, I don't <laughs> think. And oh, it's really colourful. colourful. It is really, really colourful. Now it's just a matter of mixing that up. So this is just a chicken stock. You can use a vegetable stock. A tablespoon or so of tomato paste. And just stir that through. And that gives it just a lovely colour. And just... Um, Salt and pepper as you as you like. Mm -hmm. And what we're just going to do now is bring it up to the boil and then drop it and simmer it. That's ready for the cheese to go in for a couple of minutes. And um, then it's ready to serve up. You're gonna make wow, some room yeah. for them. Couple of minutes. Okay, so then what we do is we will pick up one of those cheese. Ready? And um, put wow. it in the middle like that. I'm dying to try this cheese. I've never seen cheese used like this. It all goes creamy, melty. Mm. Oh, yum. That is really nice. Maltese ravioli or ravioli says a lot about the way Maltese people approach their food. 
is something borrowed and adapted from neighbouring Italy, but the Maltese say they've done it bigger and better. Well, tell me what's inside the ravioli. We've got the uh, traditional Maltese filling, which is pure ricotta cheese blended with a little parsley and a hint of salt. Traditionally, uh, Maltese like to boil them up past being al dente because they like a really soft uh, pasta under the teeth. And they'll make a nice, uh, like a Neapolitan sauce, olive oil, and just pour that over the top. They're the sort of thing you just can't stop eating. Once you have one, you've just got to have more. And uh, <laughs> they're that sort cool. of thing. It's dangerous. So, they are. The Maltese passion for pasta and tomatoes has been taken one step further. One of the favourite dishes is an impressive pasta pie called timpana, a must at any get together. And with big families, it's always on a large scale. But if you had a Maltese celebration, you'd always have a timpana, wouldn't you? Oh, yes. Pasta is always a tradition mm. in the Maltese cuisine. Louis Bajani has worked as a cook in the catering department of Qantas for many years and in his retirement, loves to make traditional food at one of the Maltese clubs. First we put... Ah, so you use butter, butter, not olive oil? No, no, butter in this one. As you can see there, I'm crushing the garlic. You don't chop it. We add the onions now. The bacon. We put the uh, pork. OK, now we add the beef. OK, the livers. Well, what type of liver, Lewis? Chicken livers. Mm -hmm. And you can't have timpano without them? Well, yes, you can. I mean, uh, not everyone loves livers, you know, so therefore, if you don't like the livers, leave them out. Now, the stock. You can either use chicken or beef, yeah. but you need a nice, good stock. Now we add the uh, salt. That's your tomato puree, and the other one is a tomato paste. I use tomato paste because it makes it nice, rich and red. One thing the Maltese like to have it red. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's the flag, you know, red yeah. and white. Okay, yeah. That's enough. Now, we put the lid on, and that's got to simmer for about 20 minutes. Lewis boils macaroni or penne until just before al dente, mixes in grated tasty and parmesan cheese, adds the rich sauce and beaten eggs. So the egg makes it come together? It, it's it binded together. Mm, and the mm. other part is... He spoons it into a baking dish lined with puff pastry. You're happy with this one, aren't you? You'll happier. I'll be happier. When, when you have it for lunch. Of course I will. <laughs> <laughs> now, pastry. So that gives you the little air holes. Uh -huh. Now, the finish of the uh, pie, mm. if you're going to serve it on the table with uh, design on, doesn't make any difference to the taste, but yeah, it yeah. makes it, you know, sexy. Now, the egg and a little bit of milk. How long does this take to cook? Oh, you're looking at from uh, an hour. An hour in the oven. An hour in the oven. Oh. That's ready. Wow. That is a great looking pie. Every day in Malta, tens of thousands of pastizzi are made right through the day to satisfy the population's addiction. They're the Maltese version of the Aussie meat pie, and here pastizzi have become incredibly popular. Could you have predicted the pastizzi revolution? 
I don't think I predicted it, but I think my father predicted it. In 1953, when he first started making Prestixi in Sydney, uh, he must have known something that we didn't know because the business has just gone berserk since then. Hey, Doris, all those layers of pastry mm -hmm. make for the real flakiness. So. Yes, it does. It does. It makes them really flaky and very crunchy, and yet mm. at the same time, they melt in your mouth. And your mouth waters every time you hear the word pastizzi. <laughs> and then we can think of you, the yes. fastest hands <laughs> in the West. Yeah, <laughs> Like many Maltese people in Australia, Polly Vella grows her own herbs. Her flat leaf parsley fresh from the garden is used in her family's favourite dish, bragioli. We're going to do the stuffing for the uh, uh, bragioli, mm -hmm. which is the mincemeat that I mince. So is that a, a veal? Yes, it's veal. Then you put a bit of the bacon. Uh huh. A tiny the... bit of oregano. Right? And a hell very... of a lot of parsley. Yeah, we like pasta. Mm. The green garlic. Then you put the cheese, which I'm going to grate. Okay. This is the djbenit. Mm. And I use it because it's not as strong as some other cheeses. That's just the way I've got my own cheese and it's very nice. Yeah, if you've got it, flaunt yes. it. <laughs> put a bit of pepper. Mm-hmm. Just and we mix it together. Beautiful. Yeah, it it really? does. It does look nice and it keeps it together. Mm. I use the round steak. What I do, I cut all this like that and, uh -huh. and here like that. And I uh, bash it. Why I use the round? Some people use top side, some people use other so I find it it's a very nice soft meat. Okay, you don't put too much because when you do it, you don't do it one like that. What you do, you just do it. Ah. What you do, you roll it as you roll it. See how nice ah. and firm it came. The secure the end is from here, ah. see, like that. Then you, if you want, like the meat came so big, you can do two. And it's perfect. It's secured. It's mm. beautiful. Mm. You do it like that. Polly's tomato sauce, in which she braises the bragioli, starts with olive oil, in which she cooks garlic, diced onion, tinned tomatoes, fresh parsley, a splash of wine, a generous mm. sprinkling of salt and pepper, and bay leaves. Now, they, with the bragioli, we put them into the sauce. Let it simmer it at least an hour. It's very nice flavour. It's got that smoke of the bacon mm. and it's got the really nice of the herbs that we put into the uh, meat plus into the sauce. Oh, look at that. Mm. That's gorgeous. Isn't it Really nice? tender. The ingenuity of Maltese people really comes into its own when it comes to meat dishes. If there's one nationality that knows how to make cheaper cuts of meat into something amazing, it's the Maltese. Tell me about meat in Maltese cuisine. It's always secondary cuts, pig's trotters, bacon bone, rabbits that you've caught in the field, all the harder cuts of meat that are, you know, tougher to sort of break down, but in a long cooking process, they're rustic and beautiful and flavoursome, cooked down so it's nice and tender, the best. The most important ingredient in the marinating is bay leaves. Garlic, fresh garlic and red wine and that's it, and we just leave that overnight for 24 hours. The rabbit goes into a Le Crucier or a nice thick base dish. And then it's sealed off, get it nice and golden brown and extra virgin olive oil. Mm. And then season it with salt and pepper. Mm. 
that's removed and put onto a plate. And then we saute off the onion and then tomato paste, which, you know, obviously. Maltese. Maltese. That is pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. And that's cooked out. And then you put in the red wine that was used the night before for marinating. And then we've got the tomato puree without any seeds or skin. Mm. A little bit of water. Mm. And then just pop everything back into the pot, the rabbit. Bay leaves go in again. And then your potatoes. And so um, that's, that's it now, is it? That's it, straight into the oven. Um, around 140, 150 degrees mm -hmm. for about two to three hours. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. So yeah. in the meantime, what do you do? Make pasta. To start, you have the uh, you have spaghetti with uh, the salsa and a bit of you know jebenya, the the Maltese cheese, and then for the main course. You have the, the fennec with potatoes and peas. Maltese people joke about their sweet tooth. There are many distinctive biscuits and a sweet they hold dear to their hearts, pudina. Made from leftover bread, it's somewhere between a solid bread and butter custard and the Italian panfort. Rita O'Dwyer is the voice of Maltese Australia. She presents a daily radio program through SBS. Away from work, she loves cooking traditional food. It is the easiest of all and also the ingredients you always have. You don't have to go out to the shop to buy them. Mm. I mean, bread you've always got. It's better if you make it with stale bread, but you can use any bread at all. OK. What we do is, um, you just cut the bread into little pieces. Pour, pour the water on it. If you can soak it and leave it for, say, half an hour or something like that, it's better. Uh, because then it's easier for you to mash. OK, so that's all the bread rolls and the bread. So the ingredient that we need is sugar. It's better you do the sugar first. The custard powder, corn flour, because oh. it binds it all up. Then, of course, the cocoa. You can smell the cocoa. Mm. Now, the main ingredient, of course, is the mixed fruit. I've also put a few almonds in there and a few um, glazed cherries. It's like a Christmas cake. It is, almost, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. I'll put the eggs in. You gotta put a little bit, tiny bit, of vanilla essence. Especially in winter, you have to put some whiskey, or yeah. you can put some brandy, or you can yeah. put some sherry, yeah. whatever, whatever you like. Uh, I'm not gonna put all of this because it, it's a bit too much, I think. So. Is it? Oh, I think a cake can never really have too no, much alcohol. Right? I know, I know. <laughs> it's very nice. And then all we need to do is. Um, Put it in a tray and... So there's no butter to, to grease it? No, you don't have to because it's very moist, oh. as you can see. Now, this is the fun bit. When you put it in the oven, the almonds and the cherries, they come really nice and oh. crispy. So we put it in the oven for 45 minutes. Excuse the fingers. I'm dying to try this. Me too. Oh. <laughs> It is really beautifully moist. It's very, isn't very it? moist, yes. I'm expecting bread and butter pudding, but. Mmm. Mm. Wow, that's Christmas cake and. Mmm. Mm. Oh, wow, isn't it? And you can taste the whiskey fine. I sure can. <laughs>